All right, thanks guys for watching this. So this is kind of a behind the scenes just to give you a look at how I uh, did this illustration on my iPad and I'm using an app called Procreate. So what you're seeing is the longer time-lapse video that I exported from Procreate for this illustration. And uh, here we go, enjoy. All right, so what I usually do when I start these illustrations is I will work on the composition first. So you see there, I tried to start with like a zebra finch, and then I decided now I'm gonna go with a red-eyed tree frog, which is a rainforest animal that's actually really beautiful. The coloring and everything on this frog, it's pretty cool. It ranges from green to yellow, blue and orange and red, so it's really, really quite colorful. So what I tend to do here is I'll try to work out uh, composition first. And I also, for all of these illustrations, I've been throwing in the letter. So this is F for frog, right? So I'll be throwing in the letter F. So I want the letter F somewhere in here. And I want this F to look as if it's part of the illustration a little bit. So I'm trying to come up with the idea like, does this need to be a leaf? Should I be using, you know, the image or the shape of a leaf for this letter F? Um, I kind of have an idea of what I want the F to look like, but I'm just going through the ideas here of leaves. So what I did is I found a photo of um, an old antique flower can, as you can see back there. And uh, that, that logo, I really liked how that F looked, but I wanted to modify it a bit. And I decided to use that and, and start to trace out the shape of that and modify it so it kind of fit into this illustration more. And the idea for this really is kind of like, I, I really basically am thinking, you know, something, um, maybe you'd see like, you know, something carved out of gold. Uh, since these rainforests, these tree frogs are kind of in the rainforest of like, you know, Mexico, Central America, I'm thinking Aztec, Mayan, ruins, temple, gold, that kind of idea, that feel. So that was the idea. So once I've got that, uh, F, I start to lay that in the background there and what I do here this is what I would call the penciling stage of my illustration and I'm, I'm doing this on my iPad with Procreate app so what I do is I'll just go through and start uh, making different layers for the different elements of the illustration and I'll just start rough roughly penciling the shapes in where I want the leaves um, and then I'll separate each element on its own layer. So the leaves are on one layer. I've got the F on its own layer in the background. I've got the frogs on this layer. So what you're seeing is me um, trying to go through and work out the uh, different parts of that image composition first. Um, for these frogs, I want to be pretty, pretty close to how they look but I wanted to have some variety in how they're positioned on the leaves. So that was, uh, that took me a while to just kind of get a good composition of where they're positioned on the leaves there. So, and it's also going from like top left to bottom right. It's the way we usually read an image. Um, and that way you kind of go around the frogs and then you see the F in the background there. So I've got the three frogs. The one in the foreground is the biggest one. And then the other two are going to be smaller in the background there. So, And then when I've got the pencils done, penciling stage, what I'll do is I will move on to what I call the inking stage. And basically I'm going to go layer by layer again until I get the inks right. So I'm doing the F first since it's in the background. I wanted to work on that first and get that really nice and crisp. So I will spend the time to just make sure the, um, the shape of the lines, the line width and the line shape looks really nice on this. Um, and again, I'm trying to make some semblance of like a carving into this, you know, whatever this is, maybe it's gold, maybe it's some type of metal. So I'm trying to show these little inlaid carving areas in this letter. Um, so just going through and getting the lines right here. Procreate is a good, it's a good drawing app. Um, it's not vector based, so you have to kind of play with the brush to get really nice crisp lines that are smooth. And that's okay. I mean, these aren't going to be, um, I don't know, this is what's more for fun at this point. It's not really like super professional what I'm doing right now. So I just want to get the lines looking as nice as possible. And then I'm using this curved line to create a texture that contrasts with the solid areas of this letter F. And 
indicates some type of a um, dimensionality to that letter. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to ink the uh, layer that where I've got the trees and the leaves. And I wanted to make, um, make sure that these leaves had a good sense of dimensionality and shape and form to them. So I'm trying to take the time to get the shape of the leaves correct. The different, uh, whatever you call them, parts of the leaves where it kind of comes out from the stem in the middle there. And I'm also trying to give some good variety of shape with the leaves as they're overlapping each other but also make it easy enough to read visually. And then I'm doing the background trees. I've got some background tree shapes and vines that I'm just putting those back there and trying to make sure that they're not gonna be um, in the way of anything else. So I'll take the time to do that and then I will turn that layer off and then I went here and then I'm, now I'm inking the layer with the frogs. So I'm going through making sure I've got good line weight, good clean lines, I guess I would say. The brush that I'm using in Procreate is a brush called Dry Brush. And I wanted to use that one because I think that uh, it gives a little bit of softness to the lines. And I used, uh, I used a more crisp brush for the leaves because those are more, I guess, hard objects. But the, the animals I tend to use more of like this line brush or this dry brush tool and that softens up their line weight a little bit more. I can combine all of those separate inked layers into one layer and that'll be like my master line art layer and then I'll use that to start coloring. Uh, what I do in the bottom right corner there is I make a palette of my colors and I know I want the bright green to be the color of the frogs so I've got to figure out my complementary colors and triads or whatever those different things are um, basically colors that fit within a family um, that that feel natural for the main primary color that I'm using for the frogs I will kind of go through and figure those out I'll figure out the the highlight of those colors and also the shadows of those colors and that way I'll just use it as a guide as I go coloring this in the future so I start with a process what you would call flatting or flat color process that people use for comics and illustration like that and I'll just go through and do the rough, uh, flat, solid areas of each layer. The frogs, the leaves, the trees, the letter. Do that part first because then, in, then I can go through and select each of those solid colors and then do the final color on top of it. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get a good contrast of the foreground to the background and I'm using purples and blues and dark blue greens in the background so that I can use more of like the yellowish green yellows and reds and everything in the foreground that's how I try to do these illustrations and I'm also going to um, go through here at this point now what I've been what I've been doing is I will take that black line of each of the elements and I'll soften it up by using a darker shade of that solid color that I've used to fill in with. And what that does is it kind of um, gives a softer, more realistic look to this illustration. So I go through and then I just, I think they call it color filling. I color fill the line art layer based on the solid flat colors of whatever is there in the image. And again, that's gonna help soften up the image a bit. It's gonna make it look more realistic and then I can go in and then add my highlights and solid, my uh, shadows after that. This part uh, takes me a, lo a little while to do. Um, I want to make sure that I've got enough definition for each of the elements, but not too much that it's like overpowering. That's not a harsh outline for the image. For the background elements, the trees and everything, that's okay to have them be not as defined, but I think the foreground animal parts of the illustration, I want them to be more defined. So the outline is a bit more uh, defined here. And then at this point, you know, I'm going through on that solid area, color area for each of the elements and I'm just adding in um, more color to the animal. You know, this, this tree frog is awesome. It's got like blue on its arms and legs. And then uh, what it does is when it tucks its legs and arms into its body, that you can't see that blue coloring. So it kind of is hidden up by the rest of its green body. And that helps it uh, evade predators and birds and different animals that want to eat it but it can also 
you know, open up and use those colors and its bright eyes, bright red eyes to scare off predators. And then plus they've got those really cool bright orange uh, feet, you know, uh, the legs and feet and everything. So I'm going through, I'm just, uh, as you can see, you know, I had to go back and color the line again to match up to where the feet and uh, the hands are. So I'm gonna add like some dark uh, orange color to that line around the hands. Um, yeah, this, this part might take me a while to do just to make sure I've got the colors I want them. I would still call this part like flat coloring because it's not the final part where I'm actually mixing colors around and adding uh, shade and highlights. This is just the flat uh, solid areas of each part of the illustration. And the other challenge with this illustration was I wanted to bring the, the leaves out more toward the foreground, but I wanted to have some indication of uh, space in between the leaves. So I needed to get the right balance of um, shade or tint for each of the leaves so that it would look like they were kind of fading back into the background more. Color is probably the hardest part of an illustration. Um, I, I think, you know, a lot of these things are, are necessary. Line weight and shape and form are, are necessary, but I think color actually is super uh, important in terms of um, building out like the shape and the form and the space of that, of that image, of that illustration. So I wanted to make sure I got that right and that it was easy to kind of read the different parts of the image here. What I'm doing with the frogs is I'm just going through and adding um, different parts of the shadow and the the shading of this of this uh, of the frogs to give it some definition in terms of like you know what the what the actual shape of this frog is. So I'm adding some of those little speckles and everything in there. Um, the smaller guys, same thing. I'm going in. I'm just making sure I've got some shading and definition so that it looks like they're you know they're actually got some form to them. I'll play with the opacity of that stuff too. So what I do is I make a layer on top of that flat color layer and I will call it a clipping mask. And that's where I can paint my shadows and my highlights. So now what I'm doing is I'm going through for the leaves, I'm gonna go into the leaves and try to give them some definition and shape by adding these shadows first. Um, since these leaves kind of, uh, the stem goes through the middle of them, then it's gonna, they're gonna come out from the middle of that. So I'm trying to show the, the shadow going in toward the middle of it and then coming out at the edges of it. I don't wanna do too much. I don't want these images to look hyper-realistic or realistic. I want these to look like images, right? Illustrations. So this is kind of a mix between what I would call comic illustration and more realistic stuff. I want it to be a balance of that where it looks, it looks, semi-realistic, I guess, um, that's still got some character to it. So for each of the leaves, I'm going to go through and add this, this shadow and definition so they can kind of get the idea of what the shape would be for each of the leaves. I'm also looking through, at this point, I'm using different brushes to uh, color the leaves. And they've got, I've got this nice brush that's got some streaks to it, which if you look at these types of leaves, they kind of have that uh, texture to them. It's like a streak or like uh, more folds in them. So I tried to use that to, to give a indication of what, this, what these leaves look like, how they feel. And uh, I'll do the same thing as I highlight the leaves too. I'll start to use the same type of brush in the, in the highlights there. 
So I'm skipping around. I'm just making sure it looks pretty balanced, all the different parts of this image. The, the challenge for the leaves in this image was I was trying to get the right balance of shadow and highlight because I didn't want it to be too harsh. I think if it's too harsh, then it takes away from the frogs. And those are really the focal point of this image. So I wanted the leaves to have a good balance of shadow and highlight so you can tell that the form of these leaves are, uh, it's there, it's got some curve to them, but it's not, it's not overpowering the frogs that are sitting on top of them. So. You can see I'm taking my time to make sure that this, this looks right, it feels right. And the same thing for the background trees and uh, the leaves and everything. I'm just making sure the modeling um, is pushed back enough so it's not interfering with the foreground, but that it's also easy enough to tell what's going on there. So at this point, at this point what I'm doing is I'm going into the letter F here and I'm starting to add some shadow and definition to the shape. And uh, I started to make this look more like gold or metal or stone. So I've got some highlights and some shadow there that kind of gives it more of a form. The, the curved line texture, uh, I want that to look like it's carved into the, you know, whatever the form of this F is. So I'm adding my shadow to indicate that type of uh, relief in the letter there. And I'm just zooming in and out. You can't see it here, but I'm zooming in and out while I'm doing this to make sure it looks convincing, I guess. I always add the highlights last, do the shadow first, and then hide the, do the, the highlights after that. That's how I usually work. I work middle color, so like the middle um, intensity and then the shadow and then the highlight. And then I'll go through the line and I, I started to color the line of that F to have some shadow to it. So you can see the bottom parts of it um, where it kind of is cut into the letter F. I'm, I'm coloring that part of the, the outline darker so that it's got some more dimension to it. And then now I'm going back to, I think the frogs. Yeah, going back to the frogs and I'm adding in those shadow areas on the rest of the frogs, so the feet, the hands, the eyes, the rest of the frog. I want to make sure it's got some good definition and good modeling there. Procreate has um, a tool called the nudge tool and I was using that to soften up the blue and green and orange parts of the frog so that it wasn't too sharp, it wasn't too harsh. And then once I did that, then I went in and started to add the highlight areas to the frog. So on the top of it, you know, anything that's basically sticking up above the frog, I kind of determined my light source coming from the top right of the image and that way it would hit the frogs. You can see where it hits the where the light hits the frog there, and now what I'm doing is I'm just adding in more um, detail to the arms, to the feet, and I think the last thing I did here for the frogs is I started to add the highlights to the hands and also the eyes, and that kind of gives it that final piece of definition and highlight that makes it more look more realistic. And I think uh, at this point, I don't want to do too much. I don't want it to make look make them look too real. Because again, it's kind of in between that uh, realism and, and comic illustration look. Going back to the leaves, I was still trying to play with the, um, the color, the, the intensity of the leaf colors. I wanted it to be dark enough so that it would stand out from the frogs sitting on top of them but also light enough that it was like standing out from the rest of uh, the image. 
which I'm going through and I'm just finishing up the shadow here in the leaves and the in the middle and on the edges and then I'm putting my highlights in there too as well for the leaves what I t what I try to do is I try to use a lighter color than the green the middle shade of that color and then I, I tilt the color wheel a little bit more toward the yellow because light when light strikes an object it's gonna be warm so I tend to um, warm up my highlights and then you're supposed to it helps to like cool down your shadow areas so I, that's how I try to work these I try to make the highlight areas be a little bit more lighter and also warmer so that would mean going toward a yellow and then the high, the shadow areas of my shadows I tend to move that more toward the purple and the blue section of the color wheel and then and now I'm just kind of going through and adding um, those little detail, interesting little parts of the background for the trees, just to make them look more like trees with some shape. And then throwing in the final shadows on everything. The vines in the background, I went back and forth. Should I make these uh, a little bit, you know, simpler or should I try to get rid of the line altogether on those vines. I added some texture to the uh, background leaf areas. You can see I'm playing with the texture, what it would look like. And I settled on this like uh, leaf texture that I can, that, that kind of modulates and I can just paint that over and it'll give a little bit of a uh, variety in, in uh, shade on the leaves there. And then I just adjusted the, the color of the line the outline of those leaf areas so that it would fit better into the solid part of that. And the final thing I think for this is, um, you can see I did the highlights on the frog's eyes there. But the final thing for this image is I wanna give some atmospheric feel to it. So I started to put some clouds or some mist, I guess, into the background and just trying to play with how that feels and what it looks like there. So I've got some, it looks like almost like fog coming up from the bottom of the of the trees there. But not too much because I don't want it to overlap the image too much. I want it to be there, but not too, not too much. For all of these images, I'll throw the white border around the image. And then what I do is I will outline or I will mask so that parts of the image will, will overlap that white square uh, border. And I do this on all of my images to give them something that's the same that ties them all together. And it's kind of a way, a neat way to, to play with the image in a graphic design, uh, in a graphic design uh, focus. So yeah, that's the that's the final image. You can see I've got uh, all of my elements are there. I tried to push the background elements to the back and bring more of the foreground elements forward. And then I can use color. I can use um, those different things we talked about in terms of the the border outline. And I can I can use that to separate parts of my image. So I do that all to achieve more of a interesting composition for this image. So that's it. That's the red-eyed tree frog. That is the letter F there in the background. Some leaves, some frogs. Go check out um, these animals on YouTube or whatever. If you can go to a zoo and find these things, they're pretty cool too. So um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Check back more for more videos and I'll see you guys later. <laughs>